Hello everyone, this is Unlikely Waffle here. Welcome back to Survival Life, my Minecraft tutorial series. Today is episode 20, and we are going to be working with the comparators and hoppers. Let's see if we can go downstairs like this. I'm going to try to keep this going for as long as I can. Uh, okay, this is becoming hard to navigate in here. Alright, you know what, I'm actually getting sick a little bit, so let's just go back to normal view. Whoa. Okay. So the first thing we are going to be working with is hoppers. For that, we need simply just chests. Ooh, I have 13 of those. That's nice. And iron ingots. The way you create a hopper is just by placing one chest in the very center of your crafting table and putting five iron around it in a large V shape, just like this. Let's just make a couple more of those while we're here. So that way we are prepared for today. Oops. Come on, let's make those again then. And there we go. Let's move the chest back down to our hop bar. So hoppers, they pretty much are useful for collecting items. They can be placed on the top surface or on the side of almost any block. Not stuff like signs or carpet though, that won't work. When they're placed on the top surface, they point downwards, so they are just like a regular hopper shape. But if they're placed on the side of something, see if we can find a good block. If they're placed on, say, the side of a stair or a chest, then the bottom point of the hopper actually points out to the side as opposed to downwards. When you open the GUI of a hopper, you see five slots, which can hold up to five non-stackable items, or 320 items that are 64 stackable. If it's a 16 stack, such as Ender Eyes or Snowballs, then it'll hold 5 stacks of those. Let's get these back, just with a regular pickaxe. Any pickaxe will do. So you can either place items in the hopper just by opening the GUI and putting them in there, or you can throw them on top of it, and it'll collect them. See if I can actually get that on there. Oh, it is collecting them. Good. And it'll collect it almost instantly. It can also collect uh, items from a container above it. That container can be a chest. It can be a furnace. It can be a potion stand. Pretty much anything that has a GUI on it. So the way you place it on it is just by holding down shift so that we don't open the GUI menu. And just right click like you would normally. Then you just place items in that chest and you can see that they are being taken out of the hopper pretty quickly. Being taken out of the chest pretty quickly into the hopper. So let's get those back real quick. And let's break that. And so we know that the hoppers can be placed to the side, right? The reason that is useful is because then they can feed items into another container, or into another hopper even. Let's just hold shift and right click again, or whatever keys you have bound to those uh, controls. And let's break this chest, stand right next to it so the hopper doesn't collect it. This is taking forever without an actual axe. So if we put items in the hopper, then we can actually watch them being taken straight out. The items are actually going straight into the container that the hopper is facing into. The hopper is only acting as a conduit rather than storage. This is really useful for creating... What was that? I don't know if that was on my end or if that was in the game, but I just heard a large pop. One example of why this feature of a hopper is useful is for creating a handy auto smelting system. Because you can just place the hopper feeding straight into the uh, side of the furnace. Spiders. Making sure they're not inside because that would be annoying. Alright. On furnaces, when, they, when the hopper is placed on the side, then the items will feed into this bottom slot. When the hopper is placed on top of the furnace, then it will feed into the top slot. Let's just take one of these furnaces with us, so that I can demonstrate this easier. Alright, there's the furnace right here. So let's place the hopper on top of it with while holding shift, and let's place the second one on the side. 
So if we place the second one on the side, then we put in coal or any other burnable item. And we can see that filling up into the uh, fuel slot. If we place whatever we want to be cooked, such as, let's go grab some stone. So let's put the stone in here. And we can see that is being fed straight into the hopper, into the top of the furnace. Let's just get rid of that so it doesn't keep being cooked. Because that's a little bit of a waste because we have plenty of uh, smooth stone downstairs already. Let's take both of these hoppers back. And uh, hoppers are also very much, uh, very commonly used for creating a uh, filtering system. I'm not going to get into actual filtering, but rather the storage area after the item is filtered. That is just done by placing, well, it's commonly done by placing multiple chests on top of one another. Either single or double chests will work. And a hopper feeding into the back of each one or into the side, however you want to do it, really. You would think that when an item is placed into this sideways facing hopper, that it would go into this top uh, chest. That is not correct though, because the way that hoppers are programmed in Minecraft is that they take in an item before they push out an item. So it pulls from its input, which is on the top of it, before it pushes an item out through its output end. So really because these are facing sideways, then the item will be taken from the bottom before it ever gets the chance to go sideways into the chest. To put it really simply, in case I'm not explaining it very well, the item that is currently in the hoppers would rather go down than sideways if it's possible. But if the bottom chest and hopper are both entirely filled to the brim, then it will have to just go into the next lowest hopper and chest combo. So we can see that if we place all the coal up there, we can see them going down through this hopper and into the chest. Just like many other items such as droppers and dispensers, hoppers can also be activated with redstone. However, instead of turning them on, this actually technically turns them off. Because let's say we put a redstone torch beneath this middle one, which powers that particular hopper. Then let's place some coal into the first one, and it's going through, that's perfectly fine. But on the second one, it's not going through at all. When the red when a hopper is activated, it basically makes it so that hoppers cannot feed items into other containers. It can only collect them. You can either power the hopper directly by placing a redstone torch next to it or powered redstone dust, and that makes it so that hopper will not work. Or you can actually power the uh, a block adjacent to the hopper. And let's test that, and both ways will work perfectly fine, just like every other redstone activated item. Alright, now let's try working on the comparators. Comparators are m very simple to make, they're just a little bit more expensive than redstone repeaters, because they use quartz. However, if you have a lot of quartz back up, then that's not a problem at all. The way you make it is just by placing one quartz right in the middle, one torch to either side and one right above it, and then three smooth stone right below it in a row. Comparators pretty much do what they are named for. When you place it down, you can see that there is two redstone torches on the back and one on the front. The back and both sides are input uh, sides, and the front, which has the single torch, is an output, just like the redstone repeater. It has an input on the back and sides and an input on output on the front. When the output on the front when the on the back is greater, when there is an input signal coming in from the back, then and there's no input on the sides at all, then the uh, comparator will simply put out the same signal strength that is being fed into it. So right here we have a power of 11 going into the comparator. So it gives out a power level of 11, 10, 9, and so on. However, if we also have power going into the side of it, then it goes into comparison mode. That means that if the input on the side is greater than the input coming in from the back, then it will not put out a signal of any kind whatsoever. Let's just gather all these back up here.
but if the power coming out from the side is less than the power coming in from the back, done like this, then it will simply act like how we were talking about before when it was in maintaining mode, which was just repeating the same signal, which was just putting out the same signal strength that was being put that was being put into it from the back. Comparators are also able to go into subtraction mode by right-clicking on them. This means that when the uh, input from this, this means that it will take the value of the input from the side away from the value of the input from the back. So this means that if we have, let's say, an input of 14 from the back and an input of 11 from the side, then it will output a signal strength of 2. So we should see, yep, right here. Comparators, however, are not really used that much in this context. They are more commonly used to detect the fullness of an item, of a container. Usually chests, droppers, and hoppers. Let's just show you with the hopper because that's a little bit easier to explain. Where's our repeater? Or Where'd it go? Oh, there it is. Okay, good. So if we have a hopper and we put a comparator coming off the off the side of it, then because there's nothing in the hopper, then there will be no signal coming out. However, if we put uh, one single 64 stackable item in this, then that is taking up 100, 1 out of 320 possible spaces for this to be filled because there's 5 slots. And if it's a 64 stackable item, that's 5 times 64, which is 320 possible spaces. So if there's only one piece, then we get an output signal strength of 1 because it's 1 out of 320 rounded up. However, if we put in a non-stackable item, then that takes up one fifth of the space, which puts out a signal strength of 3, which is one fifth of the entire possible signal strength of 15. So if we put in, say, 2 of them, then that would give us a signal strength of 6, as we can see here. And of course, if you want to amplify the signal, like if you want it to have a strong signal if there's anything in there at all, then that is, of course, easy to amplify just by putting a repeater right there. If we have a single chest with a... where'd it go? How do I keep losing this comparator? Am I just not seeing it? There it is. I am not observant today. If we have a comparator seeing how much items are in a chest, then of course one single stack, 64 stackable item will again put out a signal strength of 1 because it is rounding up to the nearest signal strength that is not 0. But it will take a lot more items to get it up to a signal uh, to higher signal strengths because there are more slots, 27 as opposed to 5 of that. So this is putting in a 127th signal, which is still just a signal strength of 1. This becomes even more challenging as we add slots to it, so this will compare the entire double chest as a whole, rather than just the small chest that is sitting right next to it. But that is going to be it for today on Hoppers and Comparators. I know this just seems like kind of a weird, disjointed episode, but these items and techniques are going to be used very soon when we go to make our potions room. So we have that to look forward to. I hope everyone enjoyed it, and if you did, please feel free to leave a like and a comment below, and I will see you next time. So long, everyone.